Carmel Divine Grace Foundation Secondary School, Second Term Examination, 2021 to 2022, Secondary Four English Language Paper Three, Instructions. Listen to the recording and follow the instructions carefully. Answer all questions. Use the pencil for all questions for Part A. Use the pen for Part B. Write your answers for Part B in the Part B question answer book. Write on every line. Put all the answers of all the other sections in this question answer book. You lose marks if you do not follow these instructions. Part A Situation In Part A, you will have a total of four tasks to do related to the theme of exploration. Follow the instructions in the question answer book and on the recording to complete the tasks. You will find all the information you need in the question answer book and on the recording. You now have two minutes to familiarize yourself with tasks one to four. Task 1. Ellen and Trevor are looking at the website of the Exciting Exploration Travel Group. Listen to the conversation and fill in the missing information in the spaces provided. The first one has been provided as an example. You now have 30 seconds to study the task. At the end of the task, you will have one minute to tidy up your answers. Hey, look at this, Trevor. I found the website for a specialized travel agent called the Exciting Exploration Travel Group. Oh? How are they specialized? They organize adventure holiday packages. Adventure holidays? Just what we've been talking about. Yep. So, what sorts of holidays have they got on offer? Let me see. Okay, here's a list of what they are offering at the moment. There's a, a volcano exploration. Volcano exploration? Wow. 
That sounds amazing. It does. Right? Anything else? Yes, there's a jungle trek. A jungle trek sounds good. There's also sailing across the Atlantic Ocean and a mountain range horse trek. What about that last one? I know how much you love horse trekking. That does sound like something I'd enjoy, but I don't think a holiday on a horse is really your thing. Yeah, maybe. What about the long distance sailing trip? That sounds pretty exciting. It does, doesn't it? I'd certainly be interested in that one. Can we find out more about it? Sure, let me just click on it. Wow! It certainly is long distance. The trip takes 35 days. 35 days? It's a long time, but we do have all summer free. Where does the journey start? Antigua, in the Caribbean. And it finishes in the UK. Hey, we could even travel round the UK for a bit afterwards. I've got family there. You've been on sailing trips before, haven't you? I have, yes. And you? Yes. I used to sail a lot when I was younger. My uncle had a small sailing boat. Oh, how interesting. Why do you ask, anyway? You need to have some sailing experience to join the trip. You will help sail and run the boat. Oh, I see. Wow, it really does sound exciting. So, how much does it cost? I expect it's quite expensive. Yes, it's very expensive. 2,000 British pounds. 2,000? Gosh, that's about 20,000 Hong Kong dollars. I guess it does include all your meals on board, and all the facilities and equipment. But yes, $20,000 isn't cheap. What else does that include? Let's see, it includes training, and all visa and insurance fees. And also, when you're on land, any transport costs. I presume that does not include flights. No. Visas and insurance can be quite costly, so it's good that those are covered. What sort of training do they mean? Sailing. Oh, of course. Oh, look. They have access to three different yachts. Oh. How do you know which one will be used for the journey? It says it depends on the number of people joining, and which yachts are available. They are very nice, aren't they? I like Yacht B. It has two showers and the largest number of beds, so it must be quite big. Yes, you'd need two showers if you had a group of eight. Yacht A also has two showers, but it's for a group of six. So, I like that one better. Yacht C has the same number of beds, but only one shower. So, I guess Yacht C is the smallest yacht among the three. But I'm sure they'd all be a lot of fun to sail. Oh, there are some reviews. Let's take a look at those. Okay. So, Eric joined the trip last year. He says it really was a true adventure. Oh, that's great to hear. I could certainly see why he says it was an adventure. Oh, someone has said that she wasn't very happy with the amount of information she was given before the trip. It was difficult to be prepared. I think if I were to join, I'd ask a lot of questions, to make sure I was properly prepared. Yes, I think that would be the sensible thing to do. That is the end of task one. You now have one minute to tidy up your answers.
Task 2. Laura is a writer with an online travel magazine. She is interviewing Alan Thompson, the creator of a popular adventure blog. Listen to the interview and write the information in the spaces provided. The first one has been provided as an example. You now have 30 seconds to study the task. At the end of the task, you will have one minute to tidy up your answers. Good morning, Mr. Thompson. Thank you for agreeing to speak with me. My pleasure. Please call me Alan. Okay. Thank you, Alan. I'd like to start by saying I'm a big fan of Once in a Lifetime, and I know a lot of my colleagues are, too. Thanks very much, Laura. It still surprises me, I mean, the number of people I meet who read my blog. Well, you're very much seen as a modern-day explorer, and that's very exciting. When did it all start? When did you start writing about your travels? Well, I suppose my first adventure was in 2010. I started my blog once in a lifetime in 2015. So, before sharing your experiences on the blog from 2015, you are already an accomplished explorer. I guess so. What do you think it is that makes an adventure an adventure? I'm asked about this a lot actually. Many think it's about the things you do and the activities you take part in. For me, I've always thought that an adventure is about the whole journey. Travel or going on a holiday is about the places you go, the destinations. An adventure is about the journey itself. I see. Why did you decide to start your blog? I can actually remember the exact moment I decided to write about my experiences. Oh, yes. I was on Mount Everest. I was at Camp 1. We had arrived not long ago and had to stay in our tents to protect ourselves from the extreme weather. I was excited, scared, happy, and worried all at the same time, and I loved it. And you wanted to share that? I wanted to share it with others and also make a record of the amazing things there are to see and experience in this world. I see. How long did you stay at Camp 1? Just under 24 hours. Wow. It was pretty amazing. I bet you've learnt a lot about exploring since then. Well, there's always something new to learn. What I have learnt is what equipment I prefer to use and which is best in certain environments. Can you give me an example? Well, tents for example. Obviously, different tents are made for different environments, but I do have some favourites. I particularly like travelling with a cot tent. It's just great having something small, light, and just big enough for one. I also like that they are lifted up off the ground. I find cot tents comfortable and easy to fall asleep in. I can see that. It's like a little bed with a cover. Yes, exactly. I've also enjoyed using a cabin tent. This kind of tent gives you a lot of space inside and outside the sleeping area. It means if you're based at a location for a while, you can set yourself up with a covered area where you can sit and enjoy your surroundings. Like a little temporary house. Yes, I guess it is a bit like that. And, of course, I have also used the popular dome tent. Why do you like dome tents? They are so easy to put up and there are a lot of good quality models on the market. They are also strong. It's the dome shape that gives them that strength. 
I'm sure our readers will be interested to hear your comments about some of the tents out there. Well, everyone's needs and preferences are different. I just recommend making sure to have one that's good quality and suits where you are going to camp. Do you know where you'll next be setting up camp, Alan? Yes. I'm now planning my next two trips. The first will be to Mongolia. I'll be horse trekking there. Fantastic. Horse trekking in Mongolia. Sounds great. Yes. And later in the year, I'll be heading to Australia to do some scuba diving. I actually went scuba diving in Australia last year. It's absolutely fantastic. I bet it is. I can't wait. And lastly, I'd like to ask what advice you'd like to give our readers should they decide to go on an adventure. Well, what I have said to some of my followers on the blog is to have fun, but to play safe. Yes, safety is important. And also, wherever you go, you should always be respectful. Respect for others, absolutely. Well, thank you, Alan. And I look forward to reading your next blog post. Thanks. I really hope I can keep people interested. I can't see why not. Your blog just seems to get more and more popular. I'd love to get more followers. That has always been my goal with the blog. That is the end of task two. You now have one minute to tidy up your answers. Task 3. Ellen and Trevor are visiting an exhibition called Interesting Explorations. They are speaking with a guide about one exhibit. Listen to the conversation and complete the notes. One has been provided as an example. You now have 30 seconds to study the task. At the end of the task, you will have one minute to tidy up your answers. This looks interesting. Yes. I've always found stories about the Amazon rainforest interesting. Me too. Good afternoon. I see you've stopped at our Percy Harrison Fawcett exhibit. Yes. Well, it was his adventures in the Amazon rainforest that caught our interest really. Yes. Fawcett was fascinated by the Amazon. I see it says he was born in 1867. Oh, but there's no year for his death. No. Good spotting, miss. There is a reason why we haven't added that here. Let me start by telling you what we do know. Fawcett was a British explorer. He made many, many trips into the Amazon, often to map areas previously unknown. His first journey there was in 1906. In 1906. So, 
He wasn't particularly young when he started his expeditions into the Amazon. That's correct, but that didn't make any difference. He was still very determined and very brave. After all, think of the things he must have had to face while being in the jungle. Poisonous and dangerous animals, insects, and disease. All very different from life in Britain. Yes, think of all the insects in the Amazon. And they could be the source of many diseases. There was also thick vegetation. You couldn't just find a path and walk down it. It would have been tough cutting your way through. I hadn't thought of that. Yes, such thick vegetation. It would be a lot of work to get through. Exactly. And all that physical activity while dealing with extreme weather. I suppose the extreme weather, the heat and the rain, would have made the job harder. Gosh, he really was an adventurer. He'd also be wary of hostile native tribes. And, of course, his exploring was all in unknown territory. He'd never know what to expect and had to always be alert and fearless. Wow. I can't imagine how he felt. So, as you can see here, it was in 1925 that Fawcett began his last trip into the Amazon. His last? Really? Yes. In 1925, he headed into the Amazon for the final time. He was determined to find something he believed existed in the jungle. A long-lost ancient city. This journey was made with his eldest son and his best friend. A lost ancient city? Wow. He must have really believed it existed to have his own son and his best friend go along with him. Before leaving, Fawcett confidently said to reporters, We shall return and we shall bring back what we seek. The trip was, as always, a long, treacherous one. They first sailed to Rio de Janeiro, then trekked inland. After reaching a certain point in the jungle, Fawcett sent the guides who were with them back. And they only kept essential equipment. Amongst the items returned with the guides was a letter to Fawcett's wife. That was the last ever contact made by him. And no one knows what happened. My goodness. That is quite a story. His poor wife. And he certainly seemed sure they would succeed. Yes, it is very sad. Many people have tried to find the remains of the three men. There are many theories as to what happened to them. Such as? Illness or drowning. Right. Or that they were killed by a native tribe. I can see illness as being a real possibility, but drowning. All three of them. Perhaps if they were crossing some dangerous river. I can believe they might have been killed by a native tribe. Fawcett's adventures have intrigued many and have also inspired a number of books and films. He really was a true explorer and adventurer. That is the end of task three. You now have one minute to tidy up your answers. Task 4. You will listen to Adventure Time, a podcast about unique holidays and journeys. The host, Rachel Baker, will introduce a new audiobook called My Big Adventure.
Once you have heard an excerpt from the audiobook, Rachel will comment on it. You now have 30 seconds to study the task. At the end of the task, you will have three minutes to tidy up your answers. Hello everyone and welcome to Adventure Time, the podcast for those interested in unique and interesting journeys. My name is Rachel Baker, and today we're going to hear an excerpt from a new audiobook called My Big Adventure by Mark Davies. Here we go. Chapter 1. What does it all mean? When I first sat down to write this book, I found myself asking what the word adventure meant to me, and what it might mean to others. The dictionary defines it as being an experience that is exciting, and sometimes dangerous. And I suppose, as simple as that is, it's a very good way of putting it. There are different types of journeys you can take, which I would consider as adventure holidays. There's the physical, when your journey involves being active, and being part of the action needed to get you from one place to another. Think of hiking and mountain biking. You can certainly have an adventure doing both of those. There are also nature-based adventure holidays, such as bushwalking or birdwatching. Bushwalking would no doubt be exciting, and sometimes dangerous. But birdwatching may not sound much like an adventurous thing to do. However, from my own experience, I know it can be quite the journey reaching the best bird watching spots. There are also cultural trips. Going on a pilgrimage can be a very exciting journey to take. Chapter 2 Taking a Risk It was 1999, and I had just finished university. I was still living in the flat I had rented during my course. I shared the flat with my best friend, Ryan. I wasn't feeling very happy at that time, because I had just broken up with my girlfriend. So, one morning, when Ryan excitedly ran into my bedroom and said, Mark, do you want to go on an adventure? I quickly agreed. I soon found out that Ryan had been looking at going on a trip for some time. He knew I had broken up with my girlfriend, so he had secretly researched ideas for places to go, and things to do. Our shared love of the outdoors and adventure sports meant he knew exactly what sort of journey would interest me. After a few days of talking non-stop about our trip, I started to worry. My confidence was low, and I wasn't sure I would be able to do it. In the end, Ryan wouldn't take no for an answer. So we packed up our flat, arranged our flights, and prepared for our adventure across New Zealand. Chapter 3, Not Part of the Plan It wasn't until we started to descend into Auckland Airport that I really felt like I was about to go on an adventure. It had been a very long trip, and we were tired. We were to spend a month travelling and immersing ourselves in the natural beauty of the country. We'd be hiking, bushwalking, swimming and mountain biking. We planned to spend most of our nights camping under the stars. It was going to be fantastic. A few days after our arrival, we found ourselves hiking one of the beautiful mountains. This was just the start of our journey, and I had already fallen in love with our surroundings. We were to hike to the peak, and then find a suitable camping spot a few hours before the sun started to set. After about two hours into the hike, Ryan noticed a strange looking cluster of trees. We slowed down and walked towards what looked like a hidden cave. Ryan immediately said, That's it. We're going in. 
he showed absolutely no fear. That surprised me a bit. I was a little more cautious, and wondered if it was the best idea. But Ryan didn't even wait for my reply before he went into the cave. And there we have it, an excerpt from the audiobook, My Big Adventure. Well, what can I say? I was immediately taken in by this story, and I found it hard not to listen to it all in one go. I think my big adventure will be a hit. Firstly, because it gets very exciting very quickly. The adventure starts from early on in the book. Secondly, Mark Davies has a wonderful reading voice. He makes you feel like you know him. You want to listen to what he has to say. All in all, I think anyone who has an interest in travel of any kind will find this story interesting, and, for anyone who enjoys a good adventure, this is definitely something to listen to. That is the end of Task 4 and of Part 3A. You now have three minutes to complete your answers to Task 4 and to tidy up all your other answers. Part B. Look at page 2 of your data file. Situation. You are Aaron Young. You are the secretary of the science club at North Point College. The club is organizing an outing for its members. Raina Ho, the chairperson of the club, has asked you to do some tasks. You will listen to a recording of a meeting between you, Raina, and Mr. Horace Chan, the teacher in charge of the club. Before the recording is played, 
you will have five minutes to study the question answer book and the data file to familiarize yourself with the situation and the tasks. Complete the tasks by following the instructions in the question answer book and on the recording. You will find all the information you need in the question answer book, the data file, and on the recording. As you listen, you can make notes on page 3 of the data file. You now have five minutes to familiarize yourself with the question answer book and the data file.
The recording is about to begin. Turn to page 3 of the data file. Hi, Raina, Aaron. Thanks for coming to this meeting. There are a couple of things we need to discuss related to Science Club activities. Hi, Mr. Chan. Sure. The coming month is going to be pretty busy for the Science Club. Yes, I'm excited. What's first on the agenda? First, I'd like us to brainstorm some benefits of taking part in our club's activities. Many people have asked me why they should join the Science Club, so I thought it would be helpful if we had a good answer for them. Got it. Let me think. I guess the main benefit of taking part in our activities is that through our activities, you get to learn about science in an interactive way. It's different from learning scientific concepts in the classroom, and the interactive element makes everything more fun, in my opinion. Great point, Raina. I like that a lot. I think we should also emphasize that our activities help students to understand abstract scientific concepts better. We should stress that they're educational too and give students the experiences they need. To be able to understand the abstract concepts they learn in class. Could we also say that our activities deepen our knowledge of the subject? Yes, absolutely. That's a great way to put it, Aaron. Our activities are intended to help students get a deeper knowledge of science. I think the three benefits we just outlined are a good starting point. Let's move on to the second agenda item. The plan for our next club outing. Sure. I think we need to go over the rundown for the day. What time does the outing start? I agreed with the principal that the trip would start at 9 a.m. Starting at 9 in the morning will give us enough time to see all the exhibits. Mr. Chan, at 9 a.m., we will be visiting the Invention Gallery, right? That's correct. I thought it would be good to visit the Invention Gallery first thing in the morning because that's one of the more popular exhibits. I've heard that it gets really crowded in the afternoon. After a lunch break, we'll return at 1 45 pm for the paper boat race. The race should take about an hour, so our final activity will be watching the presentations of the latest inventions at 3 pm. I'm excited about the presentations. I've heard they have lots of really cool inventions and machines to show off. Really? I'm looking forward to the paper boat race. I'm desperate to win that. Let's see what happens. You know, it's harder than it looks to make a good paper boat. <laughs> oh, by the way, what are the arrangements for lunch? We'll be having lunch at the museum cafe. Apparently, the museum cafe has great food and it's pretty affordable. Oh, that reminds me. Aaron, we need to talk to the contact person at the museum so that they can help us reserve 30 seats in the cafe from 12 30 to 1 30 pm. Sure. 30 seats in the cafe from 12 30 to 1 30 pm. I'll make a note of it. Thanks so much. Okay, so let me see. What else do we need to discuss? Ah, yes, we need to pass on some reminders to students who are participating in the outing. Right. We should remind everyone to wear winter school uniform. It will be fairly chilly by the time we visit the museum. Good thinking. Also, as always, we should remind students to keep valuable items like wallets and cameras with them at all times. We don't want anyone losing their valuables. I don't think this will be a problem, but just in case, we should also remind students to respect other students and museum staff. It's easy to get excited when you're in a big group as ours will be, but we must still be respectful of others. Yes, definitely. Another reminder we should give is not to use mobile phones while the tour guide is speaking. We should all give the tour guide our full attention, which means no scrolling on our phones.
Is that all the reminders we need to give? I think so. Wait, before we finish our meeting, I need a volunteer to update the club website. Can either of you help? Yes, I can do that. What needs to be updated? I'd like you to update the website with information about the second outing this school term, which will be in December. I want to get the website up to date as soon as possible so we can start promoting the second outing taking place in this school term. Got it. I'll get started on that right away. Fantastic. Thanks, both of you. Great work. That is the end of the listening component of this test. You now have 75 minutes to complete the written tasks in Part B. An announcement will be made when time is up. Take off your earphones and turn off your receiver.